Good evening. My name is Dana Kelly. I'm John Cardoso. Steve Simone. Richard Galanti. Jenny Mu. Andreas Minakakis. I'm Yuli. We represent Group 4 and we will be discussing UNICAL in Myanmar and the human rights violations. To begin, the UNICAL case regarding human rights violations dates back to 1992. The case begins with Myanmar Oil hiring Total, a French oil company, as the production company for what was known as the project. Total was responsible for mining the gas from deposits in the Yandangan field. Following this, Unical, a California oil company, took interest in the project and entered into a joint venture with Total. Unical became the transportation company which required it to construct offer, and operate a pipeline to transport the gas from the coast of Myanmar to the inland of Thailand. During production of the pipeline, UNICAL leaders were informed that the Myanmar military were providing security for the project, was forcing the Burmese villagers to work. Even more, the villagers suffered from abuse, rape, murder, and were forced to relocate their villages as the military tried to compel them with such behavior. UNICAL corporate leaders denied having any knowledge of the militants forcing the villagers to work, and the leaders even denied knowing of a contractual obligation requiring Myanmar military to serve as security. The issue this case presents is that of global corporate citizenship. Global corporate citizenship can be defined as the extent of which businesses are held socially responsible for meeting legal, ethical, and economic responsibilities placed on them by their shareholders. Additionally, this case raises the question as to whether a company is liable for the violation of human rights committed by their partners in a joint venture. Specifically in this instance, is UNICAL responsible for the Myanmar military's cruel actions onto the villagers? In terms of corporate social responsibility, if UNICAL had assessed this matter as it related to the standards of corporate social responsibility and the ethics of business decision making, it could have executed a better business plan that satisfied its social, ethical, and environmental obligations as a corporation. After viewing the risk assessment presented by the Control Risk Group, UNICAL did have the option to decline involvement in the Udana Gas Line project outright. At this point, UNICAL did have the option to pursue other sources of revenue without violating human rights. Upon joining the Adana Pipeline project, when it came to UNICAL's attention, they did have the option to petition their partners, uh, specifically Total SA as another Western company, for improved labor and living conditions for the Myanmar workers. At the same time, they could have themselves taken an active role in improving these people's lives. Had UNICAL truly taken into account the human toll of their actions uh, in this nation, it would have also been within their interest to report violations to the international community. Additionally, although this likely would have come at a high cost, they did have the option to employ private security when and wherever possible. When questions were first brought before UNICAL regarding allegations of human rights abuses, the first thing UNICAL could have done was respond truthfully. An admission of some malfeasance on the part of the Myanmar military would have done wonders to establish UNICAL's credibility before the press and the international community. Uh, standard practice when it comes to crisis management in the field of public relations dictates that you need to get ahead of the story and control the narrative. This helps to facilitate an open and controlled dialogue with all parties in involved and concerned third parties. When the district court summary judgment decided on behalf of UNICAL was reversed, they then had the option to take the case to trial. We are the stakeholders listed in this case. Um, the UNICAL is the main stakeholders and it has a bunch of subsidiaries. Um, later on, it's a wholly owned subsidiary, the UNICAL offshore company, and uh, Unicode Pipeline Corporation took over it and um, hold the entire 28 interest of this project. Um, the Myanmar Oil it also acquired the interest of this project. One by government entity which is, uh, which referred to the, um, the Petroleum Authority of Thailand Exploration and Production also get benefit from this project. 
um, the total main mod, it's the operator. The main mod made, made the triple is supposed to provide security and service during the process, but instead, they did uh, something really awful and ugly to the villagers. Um, um, the villagers who um, who are deri uh, directly or indirectly subjected by the defendants um, to forced labor, murder, um, rape, torture during this construction. The main mod oil and the gas enterprise who produce who produce and sell the the nation's um, oil and gas resources, they will get interest from the gas pipeline project. And um, the Burmese Burmese government is the one who um, leading the who leading the project. And the other potential stakeholders are the customers um, of Thailand and Myanmar, um, and people who bought stocks from the joint venture members also get benefit from. The first stakeholder is Unical, who denied that Total Myanmar, a product of the military state, had conducted any human, human rights violations in a joint venture deal in the construction of the pipeline across Myanmar. Unical was aware that the Myanmar military was providing the security of the construction of the pipeline, and that the Myanmar government had a history of, per of performing illegal and humane direct forced labor acts. Unical could have adopted a utilitarian approach and not ventured in the deal between Myanmar and Unical. This would have prevented this would have provided the most good and the least harm to the participants. If Unical had taken this course of action, they would have protected their image and reputation. A second stakeholder was French, a French company called Total SA, which was licensed by the Myanmar military to produce, sell, and transport natural gas from the deposits in the Yadana field off the coast of Myanmar. Total SA should have reported illegal acts of human rights violations against the Myanmar military on the villages of Myanmar. This action could have prevented the many deaths and injuries. The third stakeholder was the Myanmar military, who had used illegal forced labor upon its citizens in the construction of the pipeline. The Myanmar military should have used a rights approach, which would have protected the lives of the villagers. The Myanmar military adopted a joint venture deal with Unical, which was a California-based company, and would cause the United States legal system view of ethics and human rights to be in effect. My name is Andreas Minakakis, and I'm going to talk about what management actually did. Unical acknowledges military presence during the extraction process. CEO Roger Beach denies knowledge of military presence and the investigation of human rights violations throughout the pipeline ventures. There were email discussions amongst Unical Director of Corporate Communications Carol Scott and Senior Public Relations David Garcia addressing the violations and direct connection of the pipeline project. Here management acknowledges military presence and human rights violations in order to prepare for, prepare for the maintenance of a clean and conscious corporate image. Prior to invest, investing in the project, Unical hired the consultant company Control Risk Group to explore the risks involved. Unical was made aware of the forced labor by the group. President Impel met with the human rights organizations and acknowledged military use and forced labor. Impel states that the pipeline was being threatened and that increased forced labor may occur in connection with the military, contradicting manages, management's previous knowledge of violations during the pi pipeline pro project. President Impel had also testified that workers were compensated, there were mixed emotions on, this, on the subject, and porters were either volunteered or enlisted. Unical on-site representative Joel Robertson was aware of military presence and clarifies what is considered responsible and the importance of the project end, rather than addressing what has been occurring. Southeast Asia FAO and UNOCAL consultant John Hazeman reported observations of extreme human rights violations, including forced relocation, labor, and executions by the Myanmar military. Overall, management deflected knowledge and information of forced labor and human rights viola violations onto the other parties to protect the 
corporate image and investments. Their main duty was to the shareholders and to maximize value. They disregarded public interest. In order to save face and avoid bad publicity, the lawsuit Doe versus Unical Corp was settled. The encouragement for the villagers to rebuild their living conditions, education, and health care arrived too late in the project. In order to better understand the circumstances under which Unical settled, let's take the time to analyze both the costs and benefits of doing so and subsequently avoiding trial. Now, pictured above me is a graph illustrating the estimated costs of settlement. Now, there are, built into the above analysis are four primary costs totaling roughly $40 million. The first of these is the settlement payment itself, which is estimated to be $30 million. Now, we got this estimation, which is based on numerous approximations that were taken uh, from a research piece titled Energy, Governance, and Security in Thailand and Myanmar by Adam Simpson. Now, this is a research piece that actually highlights this case. It's a very you know, publicity-filled case. It got a lot of attention, and this research piece highlights it, and they estimated the settlement payment itself to be $30 million. So we took that $30 million estimate and incorporated it into our cost analysis. The remaining costs surrounding additional legal fees, public relations fees, and the cost of rebranding and the height of a little bit of adversity uh, ultimately will all drive our cost estimate up to the $40 million estimate you see above. Now let's analyze the estimated benefits of settling. By settling before trial, Unical avoided litigation that could have dragged on five to seven years. Now at a cost of $5 million per year over an average trial horizon of six years, we arrive at an estimated cost of $30 million, an estimated benefit in this case. Arguably more important, however, are the averted costs that a trial would have caused to Unical, especially given the publicity of the case itself. These include uh, damage to brand image, number one. Number two, additional PR to combat negative press coming from organizations such as humanitarian groups, things of that nature. Third, the possibility of follow-up lawsuits. And fourth, rebranding in the face of heightened adversity. Keeping all these factors in mind, we estimate a total benefit roughly $60 million. And so, in fact, it appears as though by settling for a cost of $40 million, Unical chose the better alternative. Not only did they, did they avoid additional battles both inside and outside of the courtroom, but choosing to settle saved the company $20 million. Mass action is talking about the aftermath of incident. Uh, if a multinational has violation of human rights with local government, the multinationals have to bear the legal responsibility. Uh, American multinationals, uh, Chevron, Ford, and the IBM have been charged, but no one, but no one entered into formal stage of trial. Uh, Unical is the only one American uh, multinationals uh, entered into the formal stage of trial. Uh, in, in in 2004, Unical decided to settle this to settle this out of, outside of camp. Uh, a unical agree to pay a huge sum rather than continue to, uh, to litigate. Uh, okay, now, uh, there is awareness that corporations need to be accountable for their partners' of action as well as their own. Uh, this villager took, took on a major United States uh, multinational oil company in Kern and win. Uh, this is historical victory. Uh, for human rights and uh, for the for for the corporation uh, for the corporate accountability moment, uh, co corporation corporation can no longer fool themselves into thinking they can get away with human rights violations. Uh, this case will uh, reverberate in corporate boardrooms around the world and will have a deterrent effect on the worst form uh, of corporate be behavior. Uh, in the end, the multinational company's biggest loss is their rep reputation. Winning or, winning or lo losing the case is now important. The most important thing is to realize their social responsibility through the litigation.